In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a pond and get the volume of the pond using only one feature line. Yes, one feature line to rule them all. To start with, I'll need an existing surface, which I already have, and I'm just gonna draw a shape of a pond. It doesn't have to be pretty, but it has to be just like enough if you may. So I'm just gonna close it. I'm just gonna move it slightly towards the middle and I wanna get like the average level, the cover level, where the top of the pond would be. To do that, I'm just gonna use the contour multiple and get the contour. So if I'm on 99.4, 97.4, so it'll be 98.4, like roughly in the middle. So I'm gonna convert this pond into a feature line. I'm gonna give it an elevation of 98.4. The next step would be to set up our settings for the grading because that's how we're gonna get the trick. So we're gonna go in settings in the tool space, expand the grading, expand the grading criteria set just so we can future proof it. And I'm just gonna right click on grading and hit new. And I'm just gonna call it pond. In the pond, I'm gonna select it and right click new. The first criteria we're gonna uh, set is the berm. So I'm gonna call it berm and it will be two meters at a grading of one in 40. So I'm just gonna do one in 40. And now I'm gonna set all the criteria. So in the criteria, I'm gonna change the target to distance and the distance will be, let's say two meters because that's what we named it. Projection will be stay slope and the slope of the berm will be one in 40. So now if I hit okay, you can see if I expand the pond, we have the berm two meters in there. Now, to create a pond, we need three things. The berm, we need the grading to tie into the existing surface, and we need the bottom of the pond, which could be either as an elevation or relative elevation. So let's create those. So right click again, new, and I'm gonna do the surface at one and three. So this will be the criteria that we will tie in our berm of the pond to the existing surface. And I'm gonna change the target to surface, and I'm gonna do it, let's say one in three slope. Now don't worry about these values. I would just recommend and advise to use the values that you use most often, because when you come and select these in your grading styles, you always have the option to modify them. And then we're gonna do the bottom of the pond. So we're gonna go right click new, and we're gonna do two types, the depth, and let's say two meters at one in three, and this will be relative elevation. So basically from where the feature line starts, we want to relatively elevated plus or minus. In our case, it will be minus because we will be going down minus two and the slope will be three. I'm going to hit apply and OK. And then I'm going to do a new one and I'm going to call it invert level at one and three. So this one is when I know the invert level of the pond, which we will not be using in this example, but I'll just show you how to create it. So it's elevation, and again, the slope one in three, and then the, for the cut and fill as well. So now that I have all this, I'm gonna go in prospects. I'm just gonna create a new surface. I click create surface. I'm gonna name it pond, and I'm just gonna give it proposed contours style. So now I'm gonna select this feature line, and I'm gonna go to grading creation tools. Now I'll make sure that my surface, target surface is set to existing, e.g. And in the grading set, criteria set, we're gonna click on it and select the pond. Now you can see that we have the berm, depth, invert level surface. So we're gonna start with the berm first. So I'm gonna click on create grading and creating grading group. I'm just gonna hit okay. I don't wanna create an automatic surface. You have that option, but I'm just gonna do a surface manually. So I'm gonna hit okay. So I'm going to select my feature line, select the side of the gradient because it's one in 40 up. I'm going to go outwards and you can see it's for the entire length. Yes. And the distance is two meters. So hit enter and slope because I'm doing it outside. So I want one in 40 falling downwards. So I'm going one in 40 up, which is correct. So I'm going to hit enter. So now you can see I've created my berm. Next would be the targeting uh, surface. So I'm going to tie in the berm to the existing surface. So I'm going to select surface to one in three and then create grading, select the berm, and then apply to the entire length, yes, and then slope one in three, hit enter, and for the fill as well. And you can see that is my tie-in. So if I select the berm and the feature line and go object viewer, you can see it looks great so far. Next thing, to get the bottom of the pond. Now, because I'm, I know my pond is two meters deep, I'm gonna use the depth, and I'm gonna go create grading group, select the feature line, select the grading side which is the inside yes for the entire length yes for minus two and then the slope is one in three so now if i select all these 
three items I just created and go to object viewer, you can see that I have a nice pond. Now it's not a surface yet, so we'll have to create a surface. So I'm gonna select my feature line, gonna add surface to break line, select my pond, hit okay. I'm gonna name it top of pond. Now you can play with your mid ordinates, but what I do is usually add elevation points, but you can add mid ordinates as well. So it's up to you what you wanna do. Then I'm going to add the berm one. So select the berm, add surface to break line, hit OK. And we're going to add, type it as berm. And then we're going to add this, the not the grading itself, but the end boundary of the grading to the surface. I'm just going to call it tie-in and hit OK. And then select the bottom of the pond and add to surface and call it bottom of the pond. So now if I select the surface and go to object viewer, you can see we have a nice pond. So let's change the style as well, just so you can see. And let's change it to triangles actually, because it will be helpful for the next step. So this is our pond. Now you can see that the triangles are too far from each other. So maybe you're not a big fan of this. So let's send our pond to the back so we can bring our feature lines to the top let's remove the existing style so let's so now if i select my pond and let's i want to shape it up tiny bit i can use fillet so you can see radius two let's make it three or five actually so five there you can see how it updates automatically everything in the pond and let's make this one slightly bigger just for the sake of it so 10 and 10. So if I escape, you can see my pond adjusted, but my triangles don't actually reflect the actual feature line. To fix that, I'm gonna select the main feature line and watch this. If I go insert elevation point and go increment and change it to every two meter and hit enter and then escape, you can see now my triangles got updated and they snap to each elevation. So it gives us a much more, more information, it's like higher resolution pond if you may so the triangles reflect the actual truer shape of the shape of the pond so i'm just gonna change the style back to the proposed and the next step would be is to create a surface for the water level now let's explain how we're gonna do that now we've created our pond right and this is the berm let's say and this is the tie-in and that really reflects on the other side this feature line here which is the main one that is controlling everything if we add it to a new surface it would create a plane that will reflect the top of the pond right but if you recall correctly we need some freeboard so if we drop that surface by 300 mil we will get the where the water would be and then when we do a volume analysis we can get the volume inside the pond this area bear it in mind that probably will be in cut or fill accordingly but the majority of your cut or fill depending how you run your comparison will be the pond volume so let me ex let's show it in practice so i'm gonna move my pond to the design surface and i'm gonna select my feature line and my add surface to break line hit the plus icon to create a new surface i'm gonna call it pond water level and i don't need to show any style so i'm just gonna keep it to you no know, display for now and hit okay and okay and now i'm gonna call it pond water level now again i don't need to add mid ordinates because i added the, ele uh, the elevation points so now I've got the pond water level. I'm going to add it to the dummy surface. So now if I go, if I select the pond and select the pond water level and select the, actually, let's fix it. Let's switch the properties of the pond water level just to show you what I'm talking about. So let's make it green. So if I select the pond water level and the pond and go to the object viewer, you can see, and let's go to shade it. Actually, I should change the style slightly so let's change the style of the pond let's make it let's make it magenta so let's select the two surfaces which created so you can see that the top of the pond is right there and that water level if we manage to get it slightly it's right on right so we don't have a freeboard yet but watch what we're gonna do now if we go to plus and plus in the pond water level and definition in the edits we can right click raise a lower surface and we can type minus 0.3 for 300 mil and hit enter. So if I select these two now and go again to object viewer, you can see that my top of the, the berm is here. That's the top of the pond. And if I scroll down, you can see that's the 300 drop. So that is actually the cut or the fill, the minimal one that will appear in our analysis. So let's go have a look. So we're going to go to analyze volume dashboard and we're going to create a new volume surface. We're going to name it pond volume and then we're gonna change the style to we don't need any style so we're just gonna keep it as no display and we're gonna use a base surface of the pond water level and the comparison surface of the pond and if we hit okay you can see that we have 1600 cut and 18 
cubes of fill. That 18 cubes of fill is basically, let's do a quick profile so I can show you. Quick profile, we're gonna just, yeah, keep everything apart from the pond volume. It's basically this bit here. So if I just change this one to uh, the style to additional surface. So the red line is our pond, the blue line is our water level. So basically that fill area is this bit here all around the pond that's all it is and that's our existing list make it to reflect that so that's how it looks like so now we have 1600 cubes of pond now let's sort out display so let's remove this and show no display so now if i come and let's say i want to move this slightly so i can so all i have to do is just grab this and let's say actually i'm gonna hold shift and select these two vertex because i want to move them together and let's say I want to move it slightly out. You can see that my pond volume of data is 1660 now. So let's say I want to do it again. I want to select these two. I want to move them further out. Let's say like that. And I know it's a weird shape. But you can see my it's 1900. So my pond volume is get updated. My batteries get updated. And the bottom of the pond will get updated. Now if I want to lift the pond. So let's do it something differently. So let's go to view. Two vertical viewports. And just go to top so now if i lift my feature line so let's select the feature line go to elevation editor and i want to lift everything by two meters so it's one meter here so i'm gonna click twice this so you can see how it lifted the pond and it updated everything and it didn't now the pond is not four meters deep it's still two meters deep because that is a relative elevation to the feature line so that is a great way to make your ponds so you they will be dynamic all the time so instead of offsetting this feature line and adding to your surface you can offset the gradings so this is it so if you liked the tutorial hit the like button and if you loved it share it with your colleagues so they can learn how to do this as well let me know in the comments below what do you think or if you use any other method there is another method to calculate volumes which is the analyze design stage storage which i haven't dwelled too much on it but i will do some digging around it and come back to you with the first tutorial if i see it's required but other than that let me know what your video would you like to see next stay safe and i'll see you in the next tutorial